variable. Some states have um, a fair amount of law. Routing, for example, routing pipelines, Midland, Nevada, and Nebraska all have routing laws. Uh, siting or zoning laws, um, that's, uh, that's various states have those. Spill response, Washington, Maine, Minnesota, Maine, and Alaska have specialized spill response laws. Um, some of the states have, you can delegate you can inspections from the federal programs for safety, and some states have a prior review and some don't. And some states have nothing. And that's important because, you know, in Nebraska, there was nothing. The activists in Nebraska had no laws, not one bit of state law, no environmental review, no zoning, no permitting, no routing, no siting, no nothing. And, you know, and, the, and that actually turned out to be a tremendous strategic advantage. Because it really, really, really pissed off all the conservative ranchers and farmers <laughs> that their property was taken by eminent domain by a foreign oil company and they had zero opportunity for involvement at the state level through permitting of any sort. And that's, that resulted in the entire legislative fight in Nebraska, and if you might have just heard that the state court in Nebraska just threw out the, the routing law because it was jacked by the industry, and now who knows how long it's going to take for Nebraska to figure this mess out. But basically TransCanada um, overreached um, was uh, arrogant, pushy, and really handled the strategy very poorly. And you know, there's and so that's one of the big reasons why the Eastern Cell Pipeline has been has been delayed. And uh, so you know, taking nothing and turning to something is a really uh, useful political and strategic skill. So state oil spill responses, it's not preemptive, as I said. Washington, Alaska, and Maine have the most substantial programs. You may also address liability instead of paper response costs, deal with private damages. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to deal with that. That's the, another picture of the Castleton explosion. Um, and then we just author, just, uh, just try to introduce a, a bill in Minnesota to uh, improve the state's emergency response planning. There's a number of elements here. The current law basically just says federal standards are good enough, which means for railroads, there isn't any for pipelines that are kind of fluffy. Um, and so since Minnesota has probably the, has the largest pipeline infrastructure in the United States running through it, uh, currently over 1.7 million barrels per day flows through with a total capacity of 2.5 million barrels of pipeline. And we have eight, most of the routes east go through Minnesota, so we have, like I said, eight oil trains a day going through Minnesota. It's somewhere in excess of 2 million barrels a day of crude oil flow through Minnesota, which has no oil wells in its border itself. But the um, what we did is there's a number of things that are important if you're going to try to do state legislation. And again, Nebraska did state legislation. Folks should really think about pulling out some state ledge. Um, detailed equipment and personnel standards because the pipeline and rail stuff don't exist. A fee to pay for all this. This is very expensive. And, um, and also to pay for first responders. I met with a St. Paul fire chief last week. And they were very interested in trying to deal with this because the tracks go right through residential neighborhoods in St. Paul. It takes a tremendous amount of foam to try to put out one of these fires, and they don't got it. In the meantime, when one of these things goes up, uh, there's been a number of stories, and the first responders are very sensitive to this. So if you're looking for political allies, talk to the fire departments. You know, if a propane car blows up, it's like a small loop. And there have been plenty of examples of firefighters in small towns, all of your fire departments, getting killed instantly in these hazardous material fires. They are very, the, the emergency first responders are very interested in this. I've also presented to the Iron Patrol in Nebraska and the FBI in Nebraska and a bunch of other folks. And the sheriffs, the local sheriffs are very concerned with this. You've got a lot of allies in the first responder community. Um, county level spill response planning is important. Um, and then I think most important things is citizen review. These, all these federal safety laws basically have excluded um, citizen action at any level. FEMSA has uh, only one sort of situation when they have to do a safety waiver where they have a public hearing. Otherwise, everything else that FEMSA does is behind the iron curtain. It's, you know, it's, it's just hidden. Probably the same way that FRA and us will do that. So um, having some ability for citizens to see what this planning is like is very important for a state law. Because Washington is more transparent that way, and they have some of the best um, planning in the country. Um, and then finally, identification of vulnerable populations and natural resources, uh, nursing homes, hospitals, um, and other kind of natural resources. Plus
plus thinking about, say, do you don't want to have a little button go by a explosive factory, for example. Um, and thank you very much. And again, teach people, and we'll all about this.